Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Happy New Year. Today we have Assistant Secretary Attorney Chris uh, Roman to introduce our guest for today. Thank you, Yusek. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. We consider our labor force as one of the strongest assets of our nation. The President, under his administration, has therefore been working tirelessly to provide a comfortable life for the Filipino worker. This year, the President, among others, issued Executive Order Number 51 to protect the right of the workers to security of tenure, launched the Overseas Filipino Bank, settled various claims of several laborers, and created around 826,000 jobs for Filipinos. Because of the strong political will of our chief executive, who also acts as our head of state, a, mem a memorandum of agreement between the Philippines and Kuwait has also been signed to provide safety and protection for Filipinos working in the latter country. To talk more about the gains of this administration with respect to labor, we invited Secretary of Labor and Employment, Silvestre Bebot Bellu III. Ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps, let's give a warm welcome to Sec Bellio. Thank you very much, Asek Chris. Dapat kayo ang spokesman eh. Magagamit. <laughs> to our friends in media, uh, Merry Merry Christmas sa inyo lahat. Sana naging maligayo yung Pasko. At sana yung inyong bagong taon ay maging mapayapa at maunlad. Uh, gagaya ng sinabi ni Asek uh, Roman, ang major accomplishment ng Duterte administration ay nandun sa Department of Labor and Employment. <coughs> Dahil alam nyo naman, ang pangako ng ating Pangulo, hindi pa siya, nung nangangampanya pa lang siya, ay nangako siya na wakasin niya yung itong endo at saka itong illegal and unlawful contractual arrangement. And true to his word, our president succeeded in the regularization of almost 500,000 contractuals. This is unprecedented. Wala pang nakagawa ng ganitong achievement in the field of security of tenure ng ating mga manggagawa. Hindi po talaga, pati ako nabigla ako nung suddenly when we had a, an inspection, we discovered that uh, as of September 2018, we had about 411,000 plus contractuals ito ha, contractuals. They were regularized by their employers. At alam nyo dito, what is more impressive or amazing is that of the 411,000 contractuals, contractuals who were regularized, they became regular employees through voluntary regularization. Sa makatawid, yung mga employers, sila nagsabi na, oh, ikaw, you are now a regular employee of the company. Only 30, more or less 30% of the regularized employees were regularized as a result of an order, compliance order from the Department of Labor. This indicates na ang ating mga employers na rin ay kumikilala sa constitutional provision on the security of tenure of our workers. Malaking bagay po yon, malaking bagay po. At alam nyo ba, we received uh, communication from the ECOP this is the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines. And the content of the communication is unexpected. It is an offer by the ECO, representing all the employers, big employers in the, the Philippines, a commitment to regularize all their employees, the members, the, all the employees of the members of ECO. 
gagawin na nalang regular. And they're starting with 40%. When we received that communication, nabigla ako. Siyempre, kako, ang laking bagay ito. This is a big development in the labor uh, atmosphere. Dahil, biro mo, no less than employers are offering to regularize all their employees and they're starting with 40% of their employees. Uh, unexpected talaga ito. But then, sabi ko, we have to find out how soon do they intend to accomplish yung other 60%. Kasi sabi na 40%. What about the 60%? How soon? So, yun ang aming sagot sa kaila. Welcome yung inyong proposal of yung, yung regularization program nyo, nyo. Pero, we want to find out how soon do you intend to fully regularize order employees complement. Yun ang aming counter-offer. And, para naman hindi nila masabi na kaming nasa department, eh, wala man lang may bigay kapalit. In short, we offered that the moment we can agree on the regularization plan as initiated by them, we will declare a moratorium on inspection. In other words, hindi na sila gagambalan, gambalayan ng aming mga inspectors. Unless, of course, may magre-reklamo. So, yun ang aming, ano, yun ang aming counter offer. And hopefully, we can receive a response from them and find out how soon they intend to regularize all their employees. Ang laking bagay niyo, for, ano, 40 percent. 40% of the total complements of all the member employees group, employers group in ECOP. That is a big, uh, very big ano, uh, improvement in the field of security of tenure. Now, on particulars, ano, we also, ano, we have to report to you na yung aming employment uh, rate increase by 2.9%. I think ASEC uh, Roman mentioned that we increase our employee, employees or employment uh, rate by 8 800,000 plus. Oh, dagdag dito sa mga, mga present employees natin. 800,000 plus. Another major breakthrough in the field of employment. Unprecedented na naman ito. Pati kami, nabibigla kami. Nabibigla kami. Bakit biglang nakiki... nagko-cooperate ang mga employers natin? And we only see, to it, see it as a indication that you are cooperating with the administration of President Duterte. Nakikita nila kasi yung seriousness ng ating presidente. Now, aside from, ano, uh, just to give you some ano, detalya, yung major ano, improvement in employment goes to construction. May additional 328,000 construction workers. Next would be manufacturing uh, work. We have 140,000. Then we also have the compulsory security, social security, 152,000. And the administrative and support services activities, which calls for about 111,000. Now, aside from the, you know, <clears throat> from the improvement in the employment rate, we also have what we call an improvement in the underemployment rate. In other words, nag improve yung employ employment uh, status ng ating mga Manggagawa. The, employ, the improvement is not so big, but then uh, gumanda ang katayuan ng ating mga manggagawa. Nung araw siguro kumikita lang ng maliit, pero because of some incentive from government, ngayon gumaganda ng kanilang kita. Okay. <coughs> On the field of ano, OFW, ito rin major ano, concern ng ating Pangulo. You know how much the President is focused on the uh, plight of our overseas workers. <laughs> you recall the case of the Joanna de Mafeles, where the president immediately, physically immediately, sabi niya, Bebot, you declare a total deployment ban in Kuwait, which we did. And it brought about a very good uh, working relation with the Kuwait government. Kasi for, after so many years, na meron tayong mga OFW doon, this is the first time 
that they agreed to enter into a bilateral agreement between their country and our country. So we have an MOU which provides for the protection, very sufficient, very effective protection of our workers. Nung araw, reklamo ng ating mga manggagawa na sa ibang bansa, hindi nila mahawakan yung kanilang uh, cellphone. Oh. Pangalawa, hindi nila hawak ang kanilang pasaporte. Hawak ng mga employer sila. Now, under that MOU, our workers are entitled to hold their only means of communication in the, to the outside world, their cell phone. And they cannot be taken by the employers without their consent. And so with their passport, dapat nasa kanila o kaya for security reason, ididiposito sa Philippine Embassy. Yeah. And then, of course, the basic provision that our workers should have a specific number of hours of work and number of hours of sleep. At nakalagay din doon na sila ang pipili ng kanilang pagkain. Hindi kagaya dati na kung ano lang hindi makain ng kanilang employers, eh, yun ang kinakain nila. Eh, most of the time, walang naiiwan eh. Oh, now, under this MOU and the template contract that results from this MOU, sigurado na yung pagkain nila. Mamili sila, sila magluto, they can do that. Meron silang day off for one, one day a week with pay. Yun. And then, yung, ano, yung kapala system na nililipat sila sa mga employer, ng employer, limbawa, employer A, ayaw ko na yung worker, papasa ko sa another employer. That can be allowed only if the worker agrees. And if the office of the labor attache gives his written consent. Ito po yung mga protection ng ating mga manggagawa. Aside from that, you know, of course, that the president directed the installation of yung OSCO. Remember, Asik uh, Chris? OSCO is the one-stop service center ng mga OFW. <coughs> we already established 18 regional OSCOs where yung mga OFWs natin, sa halip na, let's say, kailangan niya ng passport, pupunta ng DFA, kailangan niya ng NBI clearance, pupunta sa NBI, kailangan niya ng pag-ibig, pupunta sa pag-ibig, pupunta sa PhilHealth, pupunta sa NSA, pupunta sa POA, PO to OWA, lahat ng opisina yan, they are ano, uh, put in one building so that the OFW does not have to go around spending time and efforts to get all the requirements coming from this department. We have 18 of them. Again, another first under the Duterte administration. Then, meron tayo yung 888. I, I think you're wrong. Alam nyo yun, 888. Alam nyo yun. I don't have to explain them. But we also have in the department a hotline. Hotline Dole one, three, four, nine. This is 24 7. You can call it anytime and then somebody will answer you and address your concern. Kaya subukan nyo ngayon, tubukan nyo, tumawag. Pag hindi sumagot yun, <laughs> tanggal yung, <laughs> yung nandun sa aming uh, OCC. Huh? That is true. That is ano, 24 hour, 24 hour, 24 7 service. <laughs> from Dole. Anytime, any concern, you can call this 1349. Oh. Ang problema lang, sa halip na tatawag yung mga OFW doon sa 1349, yung number ko kasi, kinalat ni dating kasama nyo dito, si Moka. Eh. Oh, kinalat niyo yung number ko. About 5 million of their followers, they have no number. So every day, I, I receive a call or text message, at least 50 to 100. Lahat, distress call. Tignan niyo ang cellphone ko. Hindi ko mo ilang ba ngayon ang message. Ay, pinatay ko pala. Oh. Pinatay ko kasi kung ano link kanina, palagay ko OFW yun eh. Ang problema kasi sa OFW calls, they come in at 11 to 3, in, 11 in the evening up to 3 in the morning. Kasi yung time difference natin. Oh. Eh, nagigising ako dahil dyan. But I cannot afford to 
to snub the call. That because, you know, that that call is a distress call. Hindi tatawag yung OFW para makipag-socialize. Hindi. If you receive the call, sir, nandito ko sa ganito, binubugbog ako ng, ma ng employer ko. Sir, dalawang taon na ako hindi sinusultaan. Sir, ganun ang tatanggap mo doon. And you have to attend to that. Ang problema lang, of course, may dinadamay din ako. Kasi sinabi ko, pag may natanggap akong call, ingat kayo. Tanggap din kayo ng call sa akin. So, I immediately relay these uh, calls or messages to people who are assigned to address this concern. I'm talking about Administrator Kakdak of OWA, Administrator Olalia of POA, uh, and, uh, Director Spiras, uh, Visperas of uh, ILAB. Lahat sila, naka-on guard sila. Even during Christmas, may tumatawag. Ha? May nagmamakawa, sir, sabi mo sa amin, Pauwiin mo kami before Christmas. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi pa naman tapos ang Christmas, saka ako. <laughs> 25 ang Christmas kasi ang tawag nga 22. Sabi ko, 25 naman ang Christmas. Sabi ko, fortunately, naka-uwi siya before Christmas. And some are arriving today. Oh, about 104 of them are coming uh, this afternoon. You may want to visit them. You may see them. They arrive tonight uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Yun ang last batch na pinangakuhan ko na makauwi kayo before Christmas. Kasi itong batch na ito, hindi nakarating. Pero naintindihan naman nila. Kasi hindi nakarating yung booking nila dahil alam nyo, Christmas, ang hirap ng booking ngayon. Mabuti na lang kung minsan nakakakuha kami ng cooperation and support from PAL. Nagbibigay sila ng special allotment para sa mga OFWs. Ayun. So, yun ang aming serbisyo sa OFWs. Meron tayong ano, OF Bank. You know that? That was launched late last year by the President of the of Overseas Filipino Bank. Uh, meron ng, kano na ba na, i, na initial, ano, yung may initial deposit na ang mga OFW doon. Uh, kano ba yun? Basta may kwan. Eh, Sizable naman, mga... 24 million na ang nakadeposito from our overseas workers. Yun. Ayan. And talking about you know, workers, you know for a fact that we have adjusted the minimum wage, not only in Metro Manila, but all throughout the region. Yung range ng adjustment is siyempre nagbabari depending on the region. The last, of course, was in Metro Manila. We had an increase of 25 Pesos. Yeah. The biggest, I don't know, it might be coincidental, but it's in the, in the region of the president, region 11, 56. Kaya lang, <coughs> uh, two tranches, the 30 peso increase took effect October this year, and additional 26 will come February 2019, total of 56. Uh, all the other regions, minimum of 20 ang increase. It may not be big, pero at least nag-increase tayo. And it is a regular uh, study of the National Wage and Productivity Commission. They do that on a yearly basis unless may mga supervening event that would uh, mandate a, a wage adjustment. Yan. So, ano pa bang pwede kong sabihin sa inyo? Kung gusto niyong malaman tungkol sa nagawa ng department, uh, ha? ano ba? Peace talk. Ah, gusto niyo peace talk? Hindi, no? <laughs> well, alam niyo, yung peace talk is, maybe you are, you are not aware of the fact that there are six paths to peace. Di ba? One of them is the talks between the our government panel and the panel of the NDF, CPP, and PA. But lately, the president decided to take the other path, which is the localized peace talks. And I think his, the president is now about to issue an order regarding the conduct of localized peace talks. Oh, so, huh? May lumabas ba? May lumabas na? Okay, so that's good. So we hope that this uh, new tack will uh, succeed so that hindi na kailangan yung panel namin. Okay, question, sir. 
Yes. Okay, question about CPP or labor muna? Peace talks. talks, okay. Uh, Rose to Benario to be followed by... Ay, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, ano na yung magiging papel ng government peace panel kung magiging localized peace talks na yung ano, trust ng administrasyon? Oh, wala muna. Wala muna. Uh, in the meantime, what we are doing is we are reviewing yung mga agreements that were entered into and then we are also preparing just in case there will be a resumption. Uh, Pag-usapan namin yung iniwan namin usapan noon and we are about to, ano eh, to finalize yung agreement on social and economic reforms, which to me is the heart and soul of the peace negotiation. Eh. Pag na, na, kwan yun, nabuo yun at nag-agree ang, ang government natin at ang NDF, CPP, and pay. To me, that's the, ano, the end game. Oh. Yes, sir. May update na po dun sa dalawang sundalong at saka 12 militia may nabinihag sa Agusan del Sur last week? Ah... Uh, the only thing I know about that is that a bishop texted me and he said he's negotiating for the release of these two hostages and he's asking me to assist in the negotiation. Pero sabi ko kasi, bishop, kako, wala, sa, <laughs> wala sa mandato ko yan, kako. So I referred them to the people who are in charge on this kind of negotiation. No? Sir, thank you. Okay, follow up. Ace Romero. Sec, the president has been uh, criticizing the NPA and the CPP recently, and he even ordered security forces to, quote-unquote, destroy the communist movement. Mm. How will this kind of rhetoric affect the talks? Well, the reality is that we are in a state of armed conflict. That's the reality. There's eh. no peace. Eh. So, we're going to do And... If I were the president, I would do everything to crush the rebellion. Oh. So, normal yan. Hanggat hindi nagkakaroon ng peace agreement or peace settlement, then we continue to fight them. And at the, at the, at the very least, uh, kung hindi man makrush totally, at least makakuan sila, madisimate sila. Oh. If they are crushed, sino pa yung kakausapin kung sakali? I well, mean, what does he mean? Ano ibig sabihin ba nung... Ibig sabihin, wala nang, ano, wala nang rebel group against government. So, wala nang, wala nang uh, rele uh, relevance ng panel. Uh, uh, so, ibig sabihin nung destroy, hindi lang literal na papatayin, meaning pasukuin sila. Ganun ba yun, Sek? Uh, hindi naman siguro susuko yan. Pareho mas siguro ma... Oh. Ayun. Uh, hopefully, we will not have, we will not have to validate this... Uh, this uh, proposal nila. Pero, gagaya na sinabi ko, mukha namang gumaganda ang compliance ng with labor standards, especially, especially on the issue of security of tenure. Oh, like for example, you talk of, ano, madalas siguro nasa, in, in your mind, ang iniisip nyo, ang SM, di ba? Oh, but you know, in fairness to SM, they were able to uh, regularize 11,000 for this year. And they committed to, to again, regularize about the same or more numbers of uh, contractuals next year. Uh, um, sir, yung iba kasi mga workers, sir, uh, sa malalaking mall na 555 contract pa rin, um, medyo nababahala sila kasi pagpasok ng January, wala na po silang trabaho. Uh, you are talking of workers who are covered by yung 555? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have to dispute that because even the employers are aware that this 55 arrangement is against the law. It is an illegal arrangement. Kaya kung meron ka mang ano, uh, kilala na covered by this 555, let's let us know. We will not let this go un un unattended. Oh. So, yun lang po yung parang is na mabibigyan natin sa kanila. Just to direct Just to your office. Give the call to 1349. Oh. 1340. Okay, oh. so, thank you, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay, uh, Vic Samintak, microphone, please. Daniel, paabot ng microphone. Okay, thank you. Morning, morning, Secretary. Afternoon na po. S
yung compliance ng mga employers sa pagbibigay ng 13-month pay, lahat pa nag-comply? Alam mo, so far, <coughs> as of this day, wala pa ako natanggap na complaint uh, from our regions because we required our regions to give us any report of non-compliance with the payment of the 13-month pay. So far, wala akong natanggap from our regions, even in Metro Manila, except, I, I'm glad you gave me the occasion to mention this, yung aming security guards in my subdivision. <laughs> December 24, pumunta yung mga gwardiya sa akin. Of course, ang intention nila, mamasko. <laughs> mamasko yung ano nila, intention nila. Huh? Mamasko. But then, I casually asked, I asked them, natanggap nyo na ba ang 13-month pay nyo? Alam mo, sinabi ng tatlo, Sir, kulang. In other words, it's not the mandated 13-month pay. And then I asked them, pinabayaran ba kayo ng tamang soldo? Sir, hindi, sir. That is the agency called Marban Security Agency. And I think it is owned by a councillor of Quezon City. Beware. I just directed our regional director to inspect you today and give me a report before the end of the day. Marban Security Agency. Biro mo, yung mga guardian nila are working for more than eight hours. Hindi pa tama, tama ang sweldo. Pagsasamantala yun eh. Kung nakikinig ka mang may-ari ng Marban Security, please comply. Do your obligation. Pay your workers. Before I... Wala, wala I cannot say, papatayin kita eh. <laughs> Pero ang sama ng loob ko noong narinig ko, December 4 na umaga eh. Imagine, 270 pa lang binabayad sa sweldo nila. And they are guards working for the more than eight hours. It's not only underpaid doon sa minimum wage kasi 5,37 na ngayon eh. Eh, biro mo 2,70 lang pala binabaya. Pagsasamantala yun. Oo. Oh. Eh, you put that headline nyo, Marban Security Agency. Oo. Oh. Sir, sinong konsyalo may ari? Eh, talagang we will ask. Anong pangalan ng konsyalo? Ayaw ko na sabihin nyo. <laughs> Baka matalo sa election nyo. <laughs> Sir, isa pa na issue. May study na lumabas regarding the job mismatch. Kasi yeah, sabi, oh. majority of uh, the uh, graduates ngayon ay eh, ill-equipped doon sa kailangan nila. Kaya hindi uh, unemployable. Anong hakbang ng dole? Totoo po yan. Kaya that's why we have, ano, we have, uh, uh, anong tawag dito, uh, maximize yung aming mga program like Job Start, SPES, yung uh, para sa mga mga bata, ini start namin early. Then we are coordinating with the DepEd, lalong-lalo dyan sa K-12 nila para matrain ng gusto yung ating mga workers para magkakaroon na ng job matching. Kasi ang totoo yan, eh, yung nabanggit mo, ang daming trabaho available, ang daming workers na gusto magtrabaho, pero hindi magkatugma. Eh. That is why uh, I'm glad we have a new uh, Director General, Secretary La Peña of TESDA, and we are working closely on how to address itong issue of mismatch. Oh. And again, also, also oh, added to that, we are also maximizing yung training ng mga construction workers dahil nawawala na tayo ng construction workers. It's so hard, even you to try in your neighborhood, ang hirap na na maghanap ng, ano, ng ano yun? tubero. Ang hirap na. Carpintero, welder, ang hirap na maghinap, maghinap. Kaya nga, we are even planning to conduct a counter, ano, counter uh, job fair. Imbes na mag-job fair tayo di sa Pilipinas, mag-job fair tayo sa Saudi. So, to attract yung mga construction workers who are there to come back because they are needed here in our country doon sa build, build, build infrastructure program ng ating presidente. Um, ang laming kailangan, and the MCI, Konsonyi, asked for about six to 7,000 construction workers. Oh, mabuti lang may listahan ako. <laughs> okay, uh, Dreo to be followed by Rose. Hi, Hi sir. Follow up lang po dun sa 411,000. Can you name some of the bigger companies? <laughs> who yung 411,000 na nag-regularize. So can you name some okay, of the big good. companies? Dole Philippines. Dole Philippines. Then... Of course, uh, 
itong ano itong mga big construction companies like the the itong yun Konsuni I just mentioned that Konsuni mga construction workers uh, and then of course yung ano din yung mga call centers dumami ng gusto yung ating mga BPOs um, manufacturing yung mga manufacturing Sir nung last May po you released a list of some of the companies who are allegedly involved in contractualization. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened to uh, some of some of those companies named there are Jollibee, yeah. um, Number one. PAL. Mm -hmm. So anong nangyari na po mm -hmm. doon sa mga... Number one doon? is Jollibee. You recall? So, sa top 20. In fairness, Jollibee is now regularizing. Pero eh, hindi pa ako masyadong completely happy dahil maliit lang ka ng re regularization program. Sabi ko, please, up your ante. They're offering to regularize 3,000 a year. Sabi ko lang, ang SM ka ako, 10,000 a year. Eh. Baka pwede nga ako pantayan nyo. Uh, they will study. Dol Philippines, after we published them, they immediately came up with a memorandum of agreement with their labor force and they are regularizing their employees doon. PAL, uh, well, of course, PAL as usual is contest, is uh, no, uh, hard-headed. Uh, so with the, uh, you know, yung PLDT, uh, dinaan sa Husgado, wala tayong magawa. Uh, but uh, I'm confident na uh, eventually we will win the case. Uh, may mga initial victory sila, of course. So, Sir, speaking of cases, do you plan to file co cases against those uh, companies who haven't complied up to now regarding the President's regularization order? We will not do that yet. We will issue compliance orders. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, Rose Cos? Hi, Secretary. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon. Ang itatanong ko po yung malapit po sa puso nyo kasi po um, ang issue pong ito ay tungkol po sa uh, recent na natanggap na liham po ng mga COS employee po sa PTV. <coughs> Saan? Contract of Service employees po sa PTV sa government channel po. Um, kasi po, nakatanggap po ng letter yun pong mga COS employee na noong pong December 17 mm. na kung hindi po sila makakatanggap ng renewal within the year, next year po ay wala na silang trabaho. Mm. Pero po, karamihan po sa mga COS employee na ito ay bumibilang ng isang taon or higit pa. And until now ay hindi pa po sila nareregular. Mm. According po sa audit po ng, annual audit po ng COA, 384 po ang COS employee at 158 naman po yung regular. So, mas nakakarami po yung hindi pa po regular kahit po maraming taon na po silang nagserbisyo sa PTV. So, ano po ang say po ng dolly po dito dahil po ang issue is about employment. At lalo na po at sa sariling bakuran po ng pamahalaan po yung under ang PTV po. To do, no, it's about employment. Pero you have to classify the employment. Uh, there is such thing as public employment and private sector employment. Ang aming nasa sakupan sa Department of Labor and Employment ay yung private sector employment. Uh, kung maaari, ayaw kong mag-comment tungkol sa public sector employment dahil yan ay sakop ng Civil Service Commission. But having said that, alam nyo, <coughs> You have to consider the distinction between a private corporation, a business corporation, and a government agency. Yung kasi public corp uh, private corporation, it is for business. Kumikita profit. Yung government agency, this is not for profit or business. This is for public service. Kaya you have to look at it from a different standpoint. Kasi kuminsan yung government in the exigency of service, nag sila ng yung mga yun, sinabi mong job orders, casuals, contractuals. But, alam mo, I have to be very frank about it. Kung minsan nagiging uh, kwan din yan, inaabuso rin yan. Pero basically, yun ang, ano, ang katayuan ng ating mga agencies na napipilitan sila kung minsan nag ng additional employees na wala sa kanilang plantilla to meet an exigency. And to clearly show this, yung, ano, yung kaso ng Yolanda. You remember? Yolanda came and wrote havoc sa, sa Kloban and the neighboring 
municipalities in Region 8. So much so that they had to hire so many people just to be able to extend assistance sa mga kababayan natin doon. Yun ang ano, yung example na kailangan kumisan mag-hire ng mga yun, sinasabi nyo nyo na job orders or COS or casuals because of the exigency of the service. Sir, pa, bilang follow-up po, bilang pangunahing agency po na meron pong na nakakasakop pagdating po sa usapin ng employment, um, dapat po bang ituring na contract of service maging ang mga reporters po? Uh, yung, kung ako ang mamimili? Opo. Mga... Bilang nakakaalam po ng regulation pagdating po sa paggawa, uh, dapat po bang i-hire as contract of service maging yung mga field reporters? If you ask me as Secretary of Labor, I would make them, recommend them to be regular employees para hindi sila mag-engage sa fake news. <laughs> fake. Diba? Kasi, oh, kasi di ba, pagka nag-fake news ka, so you can be the subject of a disciplinary action. Oh, di ba? Oh. <laughs> Sir, uh, follow up din po. Accountability yan, tama yun. Oh. Right, um, kung muna banggit nyo naman po yung distinction between sa private, private uh, corporations at saka sa government, pero um, is it Komo po, kinukuha naman yung pondo pampasahod po sa mga empleyado ng PTV sa tax din po ng binabayad ng taong bayan. Uh, is it rightful to dismiss them dahil po, or dahil po short na ang black timers, for example, sa PTV or nagtitipid sila? Uh, <laughs> alam mo, gaya na sinabi ko, if you, if you are uh, doing that kind of a job, I would rather have you as a regular employee. Oh, pero, siyempre, kagaya ng sinabi ko, uh, hindi, kasi pag submit mo ng budget, may plantilla yan eh. They create plantilla positions. And they try to uh, anticipate kung anong pangangailangan ng agency la and then submit yung plantilla. Pero kung minsan, na under ano nila na underestimate nila hindi naman nila na na, na na anticipate na may mga calamities mga problems that come in that may require them to add ad additional employees pero i am sure you are aware that there is now a circular coming from the civil service commission and the DBM na wala nang JOS at the end of this year di ba meron nang ganun extend po yata until 2020 dahil pinakiusapan po ng congress Ah. na wag, wag nga yung year ipatupad yung dapat wala ng COS. Ah, kailan daw gusto ipatupad? 2020 kung di po ako nagkakamili. Pumayag ba ang ano? Ang yung po yung naging service. usapan. Pero ang alam ko, that's the circular, eh. existing circular na up to the end of this year. If there is an effort to extend the term of the JO, JOS, uh, I am not aware of the action coming from civil service and DBM. Thank you, Rosalie. Questions? MPC? Other issue? Okay. Joseph Morong. Uh, sir, sa regarding your NDF hat, I mean, uh, peace negotiations hat muna tayo, sir. Would you confirm okay. that uh, uh, Francisco Lara resigned as a uh, ceasefire committee chairman? I saw a, you know, a Facebook item on that. Si Pancho Lara. Uh, but I think I can confirm that. Although I have not talked to, to him yet. Uh, I confronted some of my members and asked them if uh, the press release is accurate. And yung member ng panel confirmed that it is accurate. Na so, he resigned, resigned no? po oh. Ano pong reason na he cited? New. Hindi naman nakalagay doon sa news report and I have not, you know, have not uh, spoken to him yet. Hmm. Oh. Kasi said, sir, parang itinorpido daw po ni uh, ah. Presidente in some aspects of the negotiation. Parang he didn't like the way it was conducted. Some of the steps that we took in terms of talking to the Reds. Parang ganun yung kanyang statement. Yung ano? yung he does not agree with, with some of the actions of the government as far as talking to the Reds are concerned. 
Well, if that is true, then he did an honorable thing. Kasi kung hindi mo nasasangayunan yung ginagawa ng amo mo, the honor or only honorable thing to do is leave, leave your amo. Diba? Yes, sir. Sir, mm. shift ako. Uh, follow up? Wala. Sir, shift lang ako ng konti. Yung sa mga special working permits. Oh. Okay. Um, would, do we have the present data now? Kung ilan po yung naibigay ng BI so far? Yung aming, ano, yung mga <coughs> AEPs, you're talking of AEPs, yung Alien Employment Permits. Yes, sir. Our record will show that our regional directors on a nationwide basis issued 115,000 AEPs. Um, to what kind of, uh, to what nationality, sir, mostly? Uh, only, I think only, of the 115,000, there are only about 50,000 plus Chinese, all the rest. Are of different nationalities. Oh, so, 50, so majority are Chinese. Okay, so maybe almost one third. Po, no? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you also said before that you're going to study whether yung pong pag grant ng BI ng mga special permits is still wise. Can you elaborate on that point, sir? Yeah, that is true because that authority being exercised by the Bureau of Immigration was uh, delegated by the Secretary of labor then. I will not mention anymore the name of the former Secretary of Labor. But <coughs> that authority was delegated to the BI. And that is the reason why BI can issue special working permits. Yeah. Now with the concern being raised by some sectors that there are so many foreigners working without permits, yeah. some foreigners uh, doing business without permit, uh, we are studying the possibility of uh, revoking that delegation of authority in coordination, of course, with the Department of Justice, who has supervision over the Department of Immigration. So, yung 115,000 po, yun po naman ay six months yung validity, no? Are you looking into once this, once they expire? <coughs> that's pwede that's pa a very good question irin. because after the region, because the one issuing the AEPs are our regional directors. I know. Now, we ask them to submit to us the list of AEPs that they issued. Now, they submitted to us, and we came up with this figure of 115,000 plus. After that, I issued another directive telling them to validate if in their issuance of the AEP, they complied with the requirements. Because it is a basic requirement in the issuance of an AEP that you can only issue an AEP to a foreign national if that national is going to do a job or a service that cannot be performed by a Filipino. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sir, you put a grant the 115, this is for what kind of jobs, sir? Well, mga, kwan, yung mga basic like uh, yung Chinese, Mandarin, ganon. Yung mga, Tutor, ay, oh, language interpreters po ba? Yeah, mga Chinese interpreters. Hindi ko ba online yeah. gambling? Meron gambling. din yung mga highly skilled. Oh, like for example, I met somebody who is very good in yung acupuncture. Uh -huh. ano, ano, ano. Yung mga highly skilled, yung mga hindi kaya ng mga... So hindi online gambling? Ay, yung online gambling discovered by Pogo. Itong, this is with the respect to Pagkor. It ah. is Bagor that is uh, regulating this. Hindi po sa atin yan, sir. Ah. Hindi po sa dole, no? Tama ba? Paano uh, yung permit po? Kasi <coughs> parang ang fear, sir, is that there are too many. Yung ang sinasabi ko, that's why we are creating an interagency. Dahil one concern is also yung tungkol sa mga online gambling. Mm. Ang may, mga, may school of thought are saying that even these people should be given a permit. They should be required to get a permit. That is what we want to discuss with Pagcor. What is the setup now, sir, with Pagcor? Wala silang special wala pa, permit? They just come in for the company? Oh, That's it? Wala pa. Wala pa silang permit coming from the department. Eh. So under what legal basis are they entering merong, the country? Ano, merong mandato ang Pagcor dyan eh, to sa online gaming. Recruit. Ito yung Pogo, Philippine Overseas Gaming, gaming Operation. Yeah, no, no, no. So Pagcor po yung walang Pagcor permit? Pagcor po yan, so. man, no. Maliban doon, meron pa nga yung, ano, eh, yung DNR. Mm. They also issue ano, uh, special working permits sa mining operations. Uh, uh, 
Sir Last na lang. Would you say, Kaya gusto sir... ko sana na kausapin lahat itong mga department na ito kung maaari. Lahat na nabigyan ng kanilang special permit ay eh, makakumuha rin ng alien employment permit from the department. Because, sir, Pero pinag-aralan pa rin. Para malaman namin na walang nadidislocate na Filipino worker. Mm -hmm. You think, sir, that that has a tendency na parang instead po na sa Pilipino maibigay yung trabaho ay na, sa mga... Yes, oo. Oh, na sa mga foreigners. Oh. May ganun na pong tendency siya ngayon, sir? Oh, wala pa naman. Hindi pa naman masyadong rampon except yung narinig natin yung 168. <laughs> 168. <laughs> okay, Joseph? Sige, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dreyo. And then magla-last question na tayo. Okay, Jobel. Sir, yung 115,000 na AEPs issued was full year 2018. Uh, so far, that is the number. So, far. so, so anong the, period po yun? Covering up to, from the time na nag-i-issue ng AEP up to now. Ah, hmm. so... Hindi naman masyadong marami talaga. Uh, mula nung nagkaroon ng ganyang pag-i-issue ng AEP hanggang anon, 115 pa lang. So, kung isipin mo kasi na for this year, talaga noon napakalaki. Anong klaseng trabaho yan? Pero you start way, way back pa. Nung nag i ang dollar ng AEP, hindi naman masyado malaki. Ang kinakatakutan ng iba, yung bakit ang dami dyan na ano, mga nagtatrabaho, mga foreigners oh, na wala namang AEP. Oh. Sir, so bakit... Chinese yung nag-account for most of the AEPs issued. Yung? Bakit Chinese? Bakit most of the AEPs were issued to the Chinese? Yung mas marami ka mo. Oh, probably mas marami siguro nag-apply. Oh, marami nag-apply. Oh. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mm. Last question na tayo. Oh, okay, si Jopel and then Joseph. Oh, Joseph. <laughs> sir? Um... Hi, hi, sir. Hello, sir. Oh. Uh, balikan ko lang, sir, yung kanina, yung regarding sa mga private companies. Bali yung mga contractual, sir, ng mga worker kasi, yung nasa under endo. Paano po kaya natin ma-actionan yung mga reklamo nila na pag-apply pa lamang po nila, pinapapirma na sa kanila yung resignation letter na pagdating mo ng five months, automatic resigned ka na. That is, ano, Ay, that is, pong, that is an illegal ano, requirement. <coughs> If there is such a, a requirement imposed by a, an employer, you let us know so that we can ano, call the attention of the work, the employer. But I don't think that that can happen. Because under the law, if you apply for a job and you are taken as a, a, an employee, you have a, what is so-called as a probationary period. Six months yan. So kung ayaw sa'yo, after six months, pwede kang tanggalin without any cost. For no cost at all, you say, I'm sorry, you did not pass the probation. But the moment after six months, tuloy-tuloy ang employment niya, automatically, that employer becomes a regular employee. Employee, I should say. Oh. Okay, last question, jo Joseph. So, yun sa build, build, build lang po. Um, <laughs> kasi ang sinasabi natin is that this is going to be good for the country kasi it will produce jobs. No? But yes. there is also a fear Na since some of these projects are Chinese um, loaned, uh, baka naman yung mga, <coughs> uh, mga Chinese din po yung pupunta sa Pilipinas to do be the construction workers and all that. How do we make sure, number one, oh. that uh, Filipinos will be working for these projects? I don't think that, uh, first, I don't think that uh, the Chinese government would do that, would impose that condition that they will bring a project maliban lang kung libre. I mean, they give a big project for no consideration of the Philippine government. That's another thing. Pero kung they bring a project on loan, hindi pwedeng gagawin na kailangan yung mga trabahante, mga Chinese. I will be the first to, pro to protest. Oh, wag na lang. Oh, nilipat mo lang yung negosyo mo. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Dole Secretary. Mm -hmm. Thank Best you, thank Revenue you. The third, Dr. Mesojo sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.